This is my home developer setup. <clears throat> I'm basically using this keyboard here. It is a ZSA Voyager. And I have one of these currently right now. This uh, It's like a basically a magnetic, it's a magnetic phone holder by Ugreen, but you see the ZSA Voyager is magnetic. And so it just basically clips on and then I get my tinting solution, which is really nice. So I'm, I have another one on the way for this for tomorrow. I thought I ordered two, but I had only ordered one. So I'm just trying it out with one for now. And then the other thing that's going on here is I'm using NeoVim on Tmux, and I have a lot of cool plugins installed, thanks to Jose and Martinez on YouTube, who I watched to see how to do all this stuff. So NeoVim is not just a text editor, it's a full IDE with the use of a couple plugins. For instance, this is FZF or Fuzzy Search, and I can actually search through all my files and find the ones that I want. And so, you know, can't do it with, a, with a, holding the phone right now, but essentially it comes up with a list of all the files and I can filter them by changing, you know, what's in my filter here. Then there's also tools like Git. Let me show you that. So the lazy Git tool, which actually pulls up a little Git terminal that shows you all the information you need to know about your current working directory, the different commits, the local branches that are available, what files you have changed in your file tree. And you can also look at a diff for every file that you've changed and, uh, and look at things like the log of what's happened. So that's super cool too. And that's just a little keystroke away. So the cool thing is with everything set up with NeoVim, with just a, a few keystrokes, I can bring up things like Fuzzy Search, which now Fuzzy Search, this one is actually a live grep, and I can grep the entire directory for a piece of text. Like fa, let's see, where's all the fa? So here are all the places that include fa. It actually highlights the spot where that's fair sec. And, uh, and for instance, this one says there's far. Well, there's a variable far right there. I typed F-A-R, it found all the instances with FAR. So it's super fast and really awesome to use. The reason I set all this up is that I'm often working on a VM because I'm currently programming an AI application where the application requires a pretty powerful GPU, like an H100 or an A100 to run. And when I'm developing, I prefer to be as close to that VM as possible so that I can easily test, iterate, deploy onto that VM my code. Originally, I was working in something like PyCharm or VS Code and SSHing in under the hood, and then my files would get changed and I would be able to run it on the server. But that became sort of an encumbrance because those applications do a lot of file syncing under the hood. So they're watching to see what changed on the, on the remote and what changed on your local machine. They're maintaining this SSH pipe. And instead of just sending the visual context over, they're actually sending uh, all of the bytes of text and data. And so what I really prefer to do is actually is, is, is connecting over SSH and then working on the VM directly with my setup. And so the nice thing about this NeoVim setup with Tmux is that I can essentially set up a Tmux session on the remote. Within the Tmux session, I can manage windows uh, or manage screen splits and things like that. But then I can also um, open up NeoVim, a NeoVim session there, and do everything just on that VM, just like as if I were on my local machine. It's seamless. It's the same exact configuration. I, I checked my entire NeoVim configuration, which in, is written in Lua, into uh, a repo, and then I just basically clone that repo and uh, so, and source the new Z Z Z shell RC file, and then I have everything set up the way I have it set up on my MacBook, but now it's on the Ubuntu machine, which is remote. It installs everything I have it set up so that I can easily and quickly with a few commands install all of the libraries I need through Brew. And it's really awesome because it's the same exact setup. Now, if I change something, I just, if I change something in my setup, I push it up to 
to GitHub and I can pull it down on my MacBook. And so now I'm, I've got this portable IDE that runs on Mac, on Linux, um, and potentially in other places too. I haven't tried anywhere but Mac and Linux. And uh, it's really consistent. I can keep it up to date. It's configuration as code or IDE as code. And so I'm never going to like lose my settings. One of the things that really pissed me off about PyCharm was that when I started doing the remote SSH mounting, it changed the configuration that my IDE was using. Now my IDE was not using the configuration for PyCharm that I use locally, it was using a new one. And so I lost all of my special key bindings, I lost all of my installed uh, tooling, and I had to kind of think about starting over. So rather than starting over there, I decided that it was time to go back to Vim. And I had been watching some tutorials on YouTube and found that there are some awesome NeoVim tutorials by like Jose and Martinez and, and many other people. And so I took some time, uh, took a weekend basically by myself on the couch, just going through all the configurations. The other thing that I'm really psyched about is I have this Voyager, this DSA Voyager, and it's programmable. Well, I have my own custom key bindings. And so nor previously I was using a built-in web tool that comes with these ZSA keyboards, and that is called the Oryx Web Configure, Configurator. Now that's a good tool. So here's the configurator for my Voyager and how I have it set up. Um, and you can see it's a it's an IDE. It's it's nice. It looks nice, and you know it's, it has a lot of functionality. The only complaint I have about this is that it's cumbersome for me to go through and change keys. And as a programmer, normally the way I would change stuff in a text editor is I would do things like search and replace, or I would, I would, uh, I would use a search to get to the right spot or to find the thing I'm looking for. But here, everything's sort of buried under clicks, and so I have to basically um, move my mouse around, which I'm trying to avoid. I don't want to use my mouse. I'm using. I've actually disabled the mouse pad, which is why I can't like show you things here right now. And I've disabled this keyboard. Whenever this one's plugged in, the mouse and the keyboard are disabled. And I have a mouse built into the keyboard just in case with a few of the keystrokes. So I hold that middle key. And then if I kind of go up and down, you can see, you'll see the mouse move. See, there it goes. So I'm moving it by pressing some keys. And so I can, I can do that to, to like move around layer to layer look at different layers I have, whatever, but it's cumbersome. What I really would like is to be able to do that via an ID, via like a terminal. And so that's where uh, Alacrity comes in. And, and well, that's where like my, my dev setup comes in because I've set up QMK to run in my own repo. So I have QMK installed and I'm on my MacBook. And then I can basically use the same setup to edit my QMK files. And I've set up my QMK files so that they're easy to read and, and searchable. So now, um, let's see here. So now if I go over here and I'll show you that in here in a sec. So here, rather than using an, a web IDE, I have my keyboard layout, which matches this keyboard in this configuration file. And I have all my keys are like using con built-in constants from QMK or custom constants that I created um, to be able to do things like opening specific apps. So you can see here I have custom key uh, key name, key, keystroke names, which are kind of like macros, but, and they're designed for opening up things like Terminal, PyCharm, WebStorm, Postman, and now uh, key map, but also I think somewhere in here I have uh, Alacrity, somewhere on here. And then I also have some key maps for uh, window configuration, moving windows around the screen, uh, mouse movement, text movement, all those kinds of things. And so it's all in here. And when I change this, all I have to do is run a QMK command. It connects to my keyboard over USB and flashes it. And so I'm never leaving the terminal. I'm programming my keyboard when I wanna make a change 
from the terminal. And the final piece of my tool, really not the final, but the last one I'll tell you about is I am, I use ChatGPT a lot. I use ChatGPT, I pay for the pro subscription, so I have the latest model and I use it a ton. If you were to look at my web browser, I have literally a thousand chats in my history at this point, probably more. Uh, because every time I have something I want to think through, a code problem, or I want to I want to get some advice on my code, I use ChatGPT as like a pair programming partner. And so, but that's in the web browser. And like I said, I don't want to go to the web browser. I don't want to leave the terminal. I don't want to take my fingers off the keyboard. And so what I've done is I've added my, uh, I've installed a CLI tool that lets me interact with ChatGPT in the terminal. So I can actually type something here. Uh, let's see. Well, you can see I typed uh, in Vim how to resize the buffer. And so it's given me some advice on how to resize my buffer in Vim. So I, any anytime I have a question or I want to know something, I just use this um, and I and I work with ChatGPT to get the information I need. If I, it's just, it's in my terminal. It's easier than browsing the web. It's easier than going to ChatGPT on the web. It's right here. With a couple keystrokes, I can get to this and start typing and it's super easy and awesome. So like, obviously I didn't invent all these things. I'm just using them, but I'm, I'm, I wanted to say like, it did take some effort. It took me two to three days of my time, like all my free time and all my time really, because two of those days were a weekend. And one of those days I actually took a little time at work to work on this because it's important to retool. It's important to set up your, and to change your environment to make you more effective. It's a well-known fact in human behavior that your environment is a humongous determinant. It's a humongous factor in determining how you're going to behave and 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 what kinds of things are going are are going to you're going to do. And so setting up your environment to help you be successful is super important. And as I told you before, I was having a lot of friction with PyCharm. I was having a lot of friction with using the mouse and getting away from the keyboard. And I was also having a lot of friction with switching between all these different windows. I just want to stay in the zone and I want to get the answers I need and right there. So I'm using things now like ChatGPT in the terminal. I'm putting my keyboard configuration in QMK and, and running that through editing it in the terminal. I'm using NeoVim, which is in the terminal. I've got all my tooling, like Git tooling, and looking at Git history and logs in the terminal. Uh, in NeoVim, it's graphical. I have searching, I have, I have going to the definition, I have all of those tools in the terminal. And I never have to leave the terminal. I never have to take my hands off the keyboard. And it's helped me to really clarify and focus on what I want to do, which is writing code and building stuff. So that's my, my little video or my little informational session about what I've been doing. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm proud of it because it's not, I didn't create this, but I'm happy with it. I'm genuinely happy. And it feels like I've opened up a, a new chapter, which I like to do every once in a while, to, to open up a new chapter and start fresh and start writing a new chapter to my life. And this chapter is my NeoVim uh, and, and, and keyboard only, no mouse chapter in my life. So thanks for watching and I'll chat with you later.